Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center. Where the other day over on YouTube, I got a comment from a gentleman asking if I could help him train a newbie on matching lens power and lens material. And as always here at the training center, I said, sure. So I just sat down at the computer, whipped up this super easy chart to read, read one column lens power across the other is lens material, you match them, you're good to go. Not really. Ah, if only it were that easy. Let's talk a little bit about those charts that are in fact out there. We have all seen them. You've seen that one, that one. I'll leave that one up there for a second just for your entertainment. You've seen that one. And those things are a pet peeve of mine. Okay, the thickness charts, they're, they're gimmicks. They're snake oil. They're not real. Right? They don't provide for diameter. If you really look closely, you'll see how the CTs of those lenses grow to make it look like it's a greater difference than there actually is. And of course, you have to keep in mind cylinder. None of those show or account for cylinder being present. Uh, thick edge, thin edge, as that thick edge moves around in position by axis, the increase is going to change the edge thickness. None of that's accounted for. But fear not! Laramie K Optician Works, we did a physical test, ran about 50, almost 60 lenses, and I'll show you our results when we get to the bench in a few minutes. Pet peeve, in my opinion, you should find charts like those offensive. It is either reducing your value or trying to elevate the frame stylus to point and pray or point and pray. Point and pray, minus one OU, but hey, they pointed to 1.74, so what the heck? Or point and pray, corporate says that high index is the flavor of the month, and they pointed to 167, so eh, what the heck, I sold it, right? You, however, thank you, are taking the time to learn all of the things that matter. Go you. So let's, as an industry, stop going for the lowest common denominator, the chart, the quick guide. And if we do, everyone is going to benefit. You will, your customer will, the store owner will, and the lab will as well. There is not a one simple trick. There is no chart that you can simply read across up and say, oh, there's my perfect power to material match. If you have that, you've got online sales. And if you have online sales, you, the optician, has absolutely no value whatsoever. Power, material, choice, comes down to you. Allow me to drop in here and remind you that there is all the other great stuff over on the Optician Works website, and there are 14 other videos related to power lenses and material. Now, I think the fact that there are 14 other videos further drives home the point that there is no one simple answer or a chart when we're talking about power and material. How frame selection affects lens thickness, minimum blank size, how to identify lens materials, the importance and use of stock lenses. We have six on decentration. We have size and shape matter, but you matter more. We've got index of refraction, Abbey value, and specific gravity, and we'll have the links to the YouTube videos down at the bottom of this video. Every customer interaction should be different. Separates you from online sales where you don't need to interact with a human at all. What is the golden rule of optical? Say it with me. To get something, you have to give up something. 
The perfect pair of glasses has great optical clarity in all of the ranges that that particular individual customer needs. It has great comfort. They're lightweight. They're the correct width. They fit their nose well. The temples are long enough. They're going to be happy wearing them. And they look great. Now, who controls that and that and that? You do. So while you're thinking about this and working through this stuff with your individual unique customer, while you're doing this, you also have to be thinking about all of this when you're thinking about power and material. Whoosh, a lot going on there. You have got to be considering the cost of that lens in the power that you're looking at in the material that you're thinking about putting that person in. You must think about both the wholesale cost, what is it going to cost me or my employer, and what is it going to cost retail, how much is my customer willing to spend? Are they looking for the cheapest possible thing to throw in their suitcase so when they get to the hotel and take out their contacts, they have something to wear? Or are they telling you, money is no object, I want the thinnest lens that I can possibly have? You must be thinking about availability. Not every material is available in every single power range. You have to be aware of back orders. It was a couple years ago, one of the giant factories caught fire. 1.60 single vision lenses weren't available for like six months. Can I get the power I want in the material I want with whatever coatings and other add-ons I want? You need to be aware of this. Back order is a really tough conversation to have with a customer. You got their money, they're all happy, they left, everything's great. And then you call and the lab says, no, we can't get that. And then you either have to be saying, well, I can bump you up and eat the costs, or I'm gonna have to give you money back, never a good thing. Good luck trying to get them to upsell because something's not available and you weren't aware of it. Really important. As is so often the case, I see something pop up on social media while I'm assembling one of these videos, and it was the perfect connection, and I just felt I have got to share this with you guys. In the tens of thousands of people that I sold glasses to, I would say about one out of every 100 of those customer interactions, we were near the end of the sale. We had chosen a frame, we had chosen lenses, we had discussed add-ons, and I would be sitting there, and of course I don't have much of a poker face, and I'd be like, and I'd be flipping the pages back and forth, and I'd be like, and one out of every 100 of those people would say, what's wrong? And I would have to say, I'm trying to decide what is going to be the best material for this job. I was saying, I don't know right this second, but I'm gonna figure it out. And you know what, guys? That is okay to say. Look, you bring your car in because the check engine light is on. They don't know what's wrong. Okay, it takes them a little time. They have to plug it into the computer. The sensor tells them what to look at. They check that. Does that fix it? Is the light off? Right? They have to say, I don't know. I'll find out. And you're perfectly okay with that. It's expected. Right? Pest control guy. My wife decided to go to war with the fire ants here in South Carolina. The guy showed up. He said, well, first I have to measure the, the yard so I know how much I have to order. Then he had to decide what chemical he wanted to use in order to fight the ants. We were okay with that, right? He said, I don't know, but I'll find out, and that's okay. You will probably need to stop, call, and ask the lab, does this particular thing come in this particular material? What is my cost? What is my availability? What's my turnaround time? That might take you 10 seconds. Most of the time you just decide it in your head. You go, well, I had 167, 167, I'm around the edge. 167, good. Okay, we're done, all right? It might be 10 hours. It could be Friday afternoon, the lab's already closed up, and you'd have to wait until Monday, you know, who knows? But you know, somewhere in there, it's okay. It's all I'm trying to say, please. Please stop feeling like you need to just, you know, have that snappy answer or something. You don't, it's okay to think. In your head, while you're doing this, you're thinking about frame size and PD constantly. 
Minus five, little tiny pair of glasses, PD, well-centered. Stock lenses, no problem, gonna get great cutout. Everything's gonna be good, thin as possible, lens, combination of power and material. They got a narrow little tiny PD and they think the newest fashion thing, the dinner plate specials are the frames to have. Then you're gonna be thinking about surface. You're gonna be thinking about using a higher index lens to thin out that edge because of their frame choice. Do I have this power in stock? If you are on the fence between poly and 160 and you stock poly with a decent AR, you don't want them walking off thinking, well, I could just order them online. Okay, no, get, get that money while you can get them while you're there, as long as you've got a good product, good AR, if you have it in stock, sell it and get that sale. You will be thinking, will this be a stock lens or am I going to have to surface? Now a stock lens that you would order if you don't have it in stock like this, day or two, you call up 24 hours later, it's at your door FedEx and you can run that pair of glasses. Now, along with availability, it's just another part of it. You have to be thinking about what coatings you want on that particular lens, material related to power. Maybe they want polarized. Maybe they want a photochromic. You have to consider all of these things while making that judgment call, what material compared to what power I have. And a little bit of a word of warning. Don't say I didn't warn you. You would think that the top of the line, freeform, whiz bang, progressive would be the single most expensive thing out there that you can purchase. And I believe last time I looked, I think it was like a high index straight top 35 or it might even be like a trifocal. So be really careful. It's another conversation you don't want to have with your customer after the sale. So, so much to think about here. Uh, it's not just a matter of looking it up or thinking, oh, uh, I've got this. Well, then I have to put them in that. No, there's so much to this, um, including, of course, also drilling. If you're doing a rimless three-piece mount, some materials drill well, some don't. We ran a series of about 60 lenses in plus and minus three and plus and minus six. Let's head over to the bench and let me show you the results of that little study. For our physical test, we gathered up the following series of lenses. Stock in plus three and minus three. Stock in plus six and minus six. Then I went ahead and fired up the trusty Lexi and I cut every lens for the same frame using the same trace and layout parameters. Knowing what we do, we know two things. First, when we reach high lens powers, we guide our customers towards frames that are appropriate for those high powers. In other words, not the dinner plate specials. So our lens size should be a good representative sample. Second, we look to high index materials when we reach those higher powers. I think that looking at these lenses, that once we reach 1.60 and above, that the actual differences in thickness is barely discernible to the naked eye. Just a little bit more stuff because I wanted to say stuff uh, you're probably thinking, come on, John, you can give me some idea to go on. So here is the Laramie K Optician Works Power and Material Suggestions and Rules. In minus, always go with stock for single vision. Super easy, simple rule to follow. The companies have already tweaked it out. You're guaranteed you're going to have the thinnest possible combination of material and power. In plus, anything over three diopters, the only way to know what is the thinnest possible lens I can get is to call with the lab. You check with the lab, you give them all of your frame parameters, shape being the biggie, all your human parameters, your lens powers, they plug it into the software and the software tells them what is going to be the best possible lens choice. Suggestions, guidelines, in minus start considering high index at about four diopters. It's a great rule of thumb. If you're right on the fence, you're at four diopters, you got a poly, you got a 160, go with that 160. In plus, for a lot of reasons, you're basically forced into the high index, but in plus, start thinking about high index at about three diopters. 
174 is some quirky stuff. So stick with your 160 and 167 until around seven diopters. Getting up there, right? Once you hit that mark, then you can start thinking about that 174. There is our look at power and material. If you are watching us on Facebook, please give us a like. Watching us on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. Make sure that every lens, regardless of its power or material, comes from Larry K. And I will see you again next week.